You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by AWeber at aweber.com slash phillytech. Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com. Wistia.com at WISTIA.com and Zoho Mail. Hello and welcome to, finally to episode 15 of the Social Media Addicts podcast. Sorry for the little, um, I guess, hiatus we went on over the holidays. And no phone, I'm not talking to you. Google, Google now wants me to talk to it, apparently. Anyhow, I am, I am here with my co-host, Jody Raines. Say hello, Jody. Hello, Jody. And say hi, Howard, our newest co-host. Hi, Howard. Howard, how are you doing? <laughs> Live long and prosper, right? Exactly. Live and, long and prosper. Or it's, it's different. My daughter is coming up with things like, you know, she flips it over to the people she doesn't like. That's it. Don't don't live long and prosper. Well, she just turns it into an insult, so we'll just pass on that right now. We'll pass on that. And I want to thank our sponsors, um, Wistia, A Weber, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. We'll thank them further in the show. Also, if you want to support the show, please feel free to go over to patreon.com slash phillytechorg and help us support the network and help us grow grow the network and be merry. It's late. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Let's go to our first. How, how many of you guys use Medium? Oh, I do. I mean, I'm in it. I haven't really participated in it that much. How about you, Howard? No, I, I, for me, I saw Medium and I said, I don't know what it gets me that I don't already have. But it, I don't know if it's a thing or not. But some people are using it. It's just it never really, uh, it never bit me. It never got me to want to use it. But uh, it is pretty cool. But. It was just another thing for me to play with, and yeah, I actually use it. Um, I, I cross post there. Um, I put some, write some stuff specifically for Medium that I then will republish on my blog, saying, "Hey, it's over at Medium," or I will publish it on LinkedIn as well. But I will say it originally posted. I originally posted it over here. I use it as a syndication source, and okay. I, I find it. So that, let me ask you something: If you're posting it in two places. Um, not, if, not, if you use, not if you use Canonical. If you, if, you, if you use the Canonical tag in WordPress, you can say that, that the original appeared here. I'm just syndicating it over here. Okay, but then does that defeat your putting it on your blog? No, because I just want it on my blog. No, the, the only way it defeats it being on my blog is that the only way it defeats it is that it didn't originate on my blog, but people who go to my blog will still read it, and that's what matters. But 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 BBM has a wider audience, so sometimes it pays to put your content on a, a, a platform that has a wider audience. Like, why would you put everything on LinkedIn? But I would like to have a backed up copy on my site. And Matt Cutts has even said that if it's your name and your content, and you're syndicating on your properties, as long as you use a canonical tag and say it originated here, or you know, because you can control your WordPress website and all the tags in it. You can't control what goes on LinkedIn. So you have to publish there first and then you can say, hey, on your blog it's canonical to this LinkedIn post. I guess, I guess the, the only thing I have to say about that though is that they did away with the authorship not that mm -hmm. long ago and they did away with Matt Cutts. So, well, theoretically right. I agree with you. Well, Matt <laughs> Cutts isn't gone yet. That was Matt still gone. What? Matt Cutts isn't yes. gone. He's on sabbatical. He's on sabbatical. I don't think he's on sabbatical. He's, he's not gone. Nah, who knows? He's been there for a while. Who knows? But this is not the Matt Cutts hour. Let's let's move on. Speaking of Google, wait, wait, wait. Matt maybe Cuts. Howard had something to say. Howard. <laughs> it, it's interesting. Um, lots of these different sources. If I didn't have a WordPress site that I could work with, then I might look at Medium as this is a great place to find an audience and to put content up. Um, if you're getting good distribution from Medium, maybe do like best of articles or shorter versions of your articles mm -hmm. to link to the original content. But um, I'm kind of that jujitsu guy. I can do it in all the sources that I want to do it. So I don't. The 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 interesting thing is there the introduction of the private publishing, where so for yes. a small audience you can do that on Medium. Um, that's probably the most interesting part of it, because as a straight syndication source, 
I think between Facebook and LinkedIn and other things like that, I can do just as well and just take them to my WordPress site. It's then creating that, oh, well, I have a small group of people that I want to publish to. So, but again, it's just, it's an extra, for me, it's just an extra tool. So, is it cool? Is yeah, it work? Is exactly. it cool? Okay. Um, and for some people, it'll be perfect. If they don't have a good WordPress site, I would, you know, it could be another place to, to send them to, to work with. Yeah, and one of the things I find that, you know, one of my biggest things is, is, the, is your content exportable? And on Medium, Ev Williams, which is bit, the background on Medium is that it's one of Twitter's co-founders, Ev Williams, founded Medium after he left Twitter. And I think it's a beautiful looking site. I mean, I even wrote originally, why would you post on Medium, like, you know, on your content? It's you're posting it out there. And I, and I wrote another post later on after I used Medium a little bit, and I said, I get it. You know, it's a place where you can get an audience. It's like, why do you post on, why do you post on LinkedIn? It's because well, that's where there's an audience. I just think about it this way. He only had 140 characters before with Twitter, so he, by going to Medium, he gets the extra text. He gets the extra text length. But the question is, if, number one, is anybody going to read it, right? And mm -hmm. um, if people aren't going there to read the articles, I like it because I think it's um, slick. Um, I think the content is interesting. I might come across people that I haven't come across in other places. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's another media, so to speak, like almost like a magazine mm -hmm. format. Um, I, I'm just curious, I mean, since we're talking about formats, are you guys still using Quora? I, I dabble every now and then. I'll go in there, and, there, and there's, actually, there's actually a niche group like for hosting. Like I was doing some work with a hosting company, and they were answering a lot of questions about hosting on Quora, and people use it for a question as engine. Um, I, but I find that I don't use it nearly as much when I started. What about you, Howard? Um, I kind of, uh, Quora is something that when I first got into it, I was all over it for a while, and I just didn't see the metrics in terms of it translating back into traffic. So mm -hmm. the amount of time that I was putting into it, I saw so much better, I mean, I got much better results from just using Twitter than, mm -hmm. uh, from a time standpoint, than Quora. So I'm, I'm a guy that I try all these different things, and I look to see what the metrics do. If the metrics aren't supporting it, I only have so many hours in the day, so I'm, I don't want to say I'm quick to, to ditch these tools, but if it's not producing something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of sit on the sidelines. It's, uh, it's very similar to how I've done almost all the different uh, publishing platforms that I've ever worked with. Just see what they do, what's the point. Um, I was doing the same thing with Tumblr. Tumblr is a great platform, and Medium actually reminds me of a more modern way to use Tumblr. Uh, same, same basic idea. It just yeah, wasn't. Gen true, it just yeah. wasn't generating the traffic. It wasn't generating, uh, really, the amount of. Uh, I don't want people to go to my Medium site or my Tumblr site. I want them to go to my website. If they don't actually go to the website, then they're somewhere that I can't really engage with them. They're one or two steps away, um, because if they're just casually reading on Tumblr, I don't really know. If they're casually reading on Medium, I don't really know unless they start engaging there which I just didn't see that. I saw people, you know... I don't think it is a, a platform for engaging so much. But I think that Quora, and it's interesting that you bring up you weren't seeing the results from Quora, because I see Quora as being a place to connect, to ask questions and to answer questions, mm -hmm. not so much to drive traffic to um, a website or a blog, but more, um, I think, establishing authority, credibility, and connecting and engaging. So I think ultimately it does parlay into something, but in and of itself, I can appreciate that you wouldn't see the the ROI because it's not it's not built like that. I don't think Medium is either, but that's why I... I think it's, I think it's yeah. interesting. I think the biggest one of all of them, sorry for jumping in real fast, but I think that's the biggest okay. one of all of them that's really worthwhile is LinkedIn and, blo and blog posting on LinkedIn. And the main, the main reason why I, I, I put my stuff back on my SethGoldstein.me account is more to say this is this is my portfolio of my writing. It's not really meant for people to read it there necessarily. It's more for me to keep my ratings, my, my, my papers, my stuff I've been doing, have a copy of it for myself. Well, there's other yeah. ways you can keep a copy of it for yourself. But what about Google Fine. Plus, Seth? Because for a while you were live blogging or blogging on, on Google Plus. Did you, did you kind of like abdicate that, like walk away from uh, that? Not so much. I still do every now and then, and I, now I'm, I'm, less, I'm less blogging publicly. I'm, pu I'm sending out to specific circles. 
So if it's certain people I want to read certain stuff, I'll send it out to them, and I get great responses back from people when I target it more than when I just do public. So, I mean, if I want something to go to my blog, and it's an article I found interesting, I want to go to SethGoldstein.net, which is the other blog I have. My problem is I have too many properties. So I have SethGoldstein.net, which is mostly, mostly my, my Google Plus musings and random findings across the Internet. And SethGoldstein.me is my, my portfolio site and my resume. And then there's Goldstein Media, which is my business website. But, hey, Jerry, you're not allowed to knock this. You have more domain names than I do. Well, I have a reason. <laughs> you, have a re- you have a reason, I but I was just saying, so do I. Yeah, so I've got, I've got JodyRains.com, JodyRains.biz. Um, I've got, I own the other domains, and they point to one or the other. Then webmark.net. Yeah, exactly. We all webmark. have our reasons. We all yeah. have our reasons for doing this. You know, like, I have such close to me is because I needed an online resume. I didn't like about, well, about that about, about dot me. Yeah, I, about I, me. I, don't, I don't like about that me because, number one, I didn't get, I didn't get Seth Goldstein or Seth dot Goldstein. Other Seth Goldstein got that. I got Seth M. Uh, Goldstein, and uh, that bothers me. I, I never have a problem getting Howard Yermish, just so you know. I can't imagine. <laughs> That's good, Howard. <laughs> yeah, Jody, Jody, you have like a soap opera name, Jody Rains. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I am not the only Jody Rains. I have discovered there's at least three or four of us. There's one with an I, but the others are Y's, and uh, why I have no idea. But it's, it's funny because I see my name come up in, in mention, and I think, oh my God, what did I do now? Or who's talking about me? And it's not me. There's a guy, Jody, who's like in Oklahoma who does some kind of automo- automotive stuff. And uh-huh. then there, there's another Jody who also has dogs, but she also has horses. I'm totally je- jealous of, you know, that she has horses. And um, I guess she, she's married to somebody named Jerry. But it's just funny. Jerry because, and Jody. Yeah, yeah, and then there's a, a Jody Reigns who's a judge in oh. like Oklahoma or something. It's just funny. Good to know she never get a traffic ticket out there. <laughs> exactly. But hey, anyway, we all to Google Domains. <laughs> hey, Google Domains, thank you for the segue. So, I, so Google now, Google Domains is now live and open to everybody. And what's interesting about that is that it's going to allow you to register your domain names through Google. Now, my question to you guys is, do you think that... Sorry. Obviously, Sorry. obviously, Sorry. Ruger has an opinion. Yes. Sorry. What do you think? What, what say you, Ruger? He's, he agrees. He agrees. I didn't even get the question, Ruger. Wait, wait till I answer, answer the full question. I feel like Alex Trebek. <laughs> I know. Wait for the question. Please, please, please answer. Wait for the full answer, Look, please. Nobody gets near with it, like ten yards of my house without my alarms and dogs exactly. going. Exactly. You know, so. Exactly. She's yeah. looking at a force field here. Anyhow, <laughs> I feel bad for our poor. You know, people listening to the podcast are not jumping in their seats. They're like, what? <laughs> It's like, it's, when you, it's like when you say, okay, it's like when you say, okay, Siri, or okay, Google Now, everyone's phone just turns on. Oh, speaking of which, I, I ordered one of those Echoes, the oh, you Amazon. Did? You ordered an Echo? Yeah, yeah. I, I was allowed to pre-order it. So oh, that's I all. Oh, God, Jenny. I think it's cool. All right. Anyhow, on to Google Domains. Do you guys think that if you buy a domain name through Google, that it'll rank better than if you buy it through Go- GoDaddy? Let's, tr- let's test it. You buy one? Sure, I will. For twelve dollars a year. All right, and we'll do it off the show. In, okay. In other news. <laughs> in other news. Here's a question. So many of us are we're obviously involved in social media. We're obviously involved in managing social media for clients. Do you feel like there's a reason for? a social media manager to be certified in some way? Or is it just someone who, that could just be available and know what they're talking about? I mean, do you have to be certified to do this work? Do you feel like that? I mean, I don't feel like you need to be certified to be a web designer. I mean, I am certified in web design, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, what do you guys think? Do you have to be certified? Or should you be certified in social media? Does it help? I, th- I think there's a lot of idiots out there who put up a shingle and say they do so- social media. I don't know that certification is necessarily an answer because I don't know that there is any entity that has a viable certification. True. That's my two cents. Yeah, I, and I think that's a really great point. Um, I think about a lot of the webmaster certifications, um, some of the Google certifications. These are things that 
they didn't have the certifications when I was learning it. Like a lot of the web design stuff, I was doing it in the early 90s. There was no courses. There were no, like, online you could get a certificate. And so now I look at the certifications and I go, oh, well, that was 15 years ago. Why am I going to go get certified for that? Well, that's a very big difference. Um, social media, the challenge is I think there's a lot of people who do throw up a shingle and they don't have basic, um, they don't understand journalism, they don't understand communication skills. So if someone came from a PR background, I feel like they would naturally fit. Like they're, they've already done the hard work to get an education in PR. Mm -hmm. Someone with a web development background, I don't necessarily know how to communicate. I know how to use Photoshop. They're two very different skills. Um, so often I will say to clients, like, Social media isn't just I know how to use Facebook. It's I know how to communicate for the company. So if you, as a, you know, I almost look at it this way. If you're going to hire an intern to communicate for you, you have to trust them to communicate for you. And that's ever, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. If you don't trust them to get on a podium and do your press conference, then they probably shouldn't be your voice. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think furthermore, I think unfortunately there are a lot of people who know the mechanics how the different platforms operate, but they don't understand the messaging because there's the media and then there's the message. And I think Amen. that without a marketing background, without understanding branding, without understanding what you're trying to accomplish in terms of communicating, um, without creating measurable, quantifiable goals of what you're trying to achieve, then you're just simply wasting your money. Well Amen. said. Well said. Now, everyone, let's thank our... Um, yeah, we're, we're actually on a sponsor break here. Let's thank our first sponsors. I spent, I'm a little rusty. Um, today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of the online video. We use Wistia here at FullyTech.org because it's way more professional than YouTube and and the data. Someone whoever's clicking, stop clicking. For one second, let me get through the ad copy. I hear click, 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 click. Anyhow, we use Wistia at Tech, all of our videos go through Wistia. They get found online, and they're very professional, and they're really a good company to work with. They're very responsive in their help center, and they have a lot of help articles as well. So check them out at wistia.com and tell them we sent them. So, That's right. um, so Jody, are you addicted to social media? Oh, absolutely. I think I think the sign of being addicted is. You wake up in the morning, and before you're even out of bed, you reach for your phone to see what's come in <laughs> overnight. You know, you get alerts throughout the day, and you can't help but respond as soon as somebody posts something on Facebook. Yeah, I think well, you're so. Yeah, you're addicted. You're addicted. What are you, Howard? So, so let's wait. You wait. You wait till you wake up in the morning before you check this. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night and check. Because mine, uh, my phone is. Um, it's how I go to I go to sleep. I listen to a podcast or I listen to something. So the phone you is do? actually really close by. Yeah, I do. I have a little little sleeping headphones that I use, and um, not these. <laughs> Man, rolling over in these is very painful. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, a little set of earbuds that I you know fall asleep with. It's a nice way to listen to music. My wife can't have anything noisy. She needs complete silence. So I have to have little headphones. Um, but uh, yeah, the phone's there. Thankfully, it doesn't beep during the night. But um, you know, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and the phone's right there, and it's like, all right, who posted to Instagram? And oh it's my there. Lord. I'm well, sorry, we don't that's post wrong. To Instagram. In the middle <laughs> that's of the night. wrong. No posts <laughs> in the middle of the night. But, well, I'm uh, so yeah, I'm so addicted to social social media. That I'll do it in the middle. I'll, I'll get up in the middle of the night if I can't sleep and go on Facebook. And so Jody posted or something like that, or <laughs> and Howard posted. Probably well, did. <laughs> and and the funny thing for me is I have a lot of friends. I lived in California for a really long time, so a lot of my friends are posting at you know 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night their time, which is two you know one, two, three o'clock in the morning. So if I wake up at two in the morning, there's, there's a lot of activity there. by a lot of my friends happening. And yeah, so it's like, oh, well, okay, there we go, and moving on. I know, yeah, I mean, we've yeah. got Brad and Andrew on, on the other side of the planet posting. Yeah, on the Philly, yeah. Philly, Philly Tech, 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 tech Yeah, Australia. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, I actually listen to tech news. I don't even listen to music to go to bed. I don't even listen to an audio book to go to bed. I listen to tech news. I go to bed. Yeah, you're too late, geek. I, <laughs> no, I, I listen to either the, the, the Daily Tech News show with Tom Merritt, or I listened to the morning stream with um, Brian Ibbett and Scott Johnson. It's like, it's like a morning show, but I listen to it to go to bed. Or Back to Work is also good with Merlin Mann and um, Dan Benjamin, because they just yep. ramble on about absolutely nothing. Yeah, those are good. I, 
Yeah. Good choices. They're awesome because you can zone them out, but Merlin Man is so hilariously ADD that it's just, it's, I don't know, I think he's brilliant. And you know, really if, if I were any of those people, I don't know if I would be flattered or disconcerted that you were listening to them to go to sleep. I actually, actually, it's funny. <laughs> back when, back when Tom there was on Twit, and um, the, and Google Plus first came out, I um, I I talked to Ayaz Akhtar, who was one of his co-hosts on the show, and we were on a hangout together. And I told him that he's like, um, thanks. <laughs> I don't know if that's good. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, that's a good thing. It's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm listening to your voices, putting me to sleep. I everything that you say has been implanted in my brain. <laughs> exactly. All right. Anyhow, on to the next story. How about this? The top stories of Twitter in 2014. There's some interesting ones in here. Have you guys checked these out? What do you think is an interesting one? Well, I mean, there's some interesting ones. Like the... Howard. What? <laughs> what do you think was interesting? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of the Sterling Clipper, you know, what was his name, Howard Sterling, or what's the guy's name? You know, the guy who was, was very racist on the on the Los Howard Angeles Stern? Clippers. No, Sterling. What? The owner Sterling. of the Clipper, the former owner of the Clippers. That was an interesting story in the news and on Twitter. Um, Chris, well, what what's NSA, sad for me to uh, say is there's very little nice stuff. It's all just, you know. Yeah. Russia, no, like, Ukraine, Obamacare. I would have wanted him. expected to see a lot of ice bucket challenge. Uh, it's in there. Of, yeah, but, but it's a shame that it's all. Well, uh, I mean, the ice bucket challenge wouldn't have been anything if it were not for social media. So, yeah. you know, I mean, regardless of where it shows up on the rank, it did definitely propel it. Yeah. You know, to to some. You know. But but, uh, but, but, what's but, it didn't, but I think that on Twitter, like you didn't really see the ice bucket challenge show up on Twitter that much. No, you really it was saw more on it show Facebook. Up on face, yeah, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, so. but because you needed the visual. I saw one today, uh, an ice bucket challenge. Um, somebody sent it to me. I hadn't seen it when it was going around. The guy had a crane with a big um, and a bucket, and I guess the other guy who was sitting in the crane was supposed to turn it to dump the water on his head, and instead the whole crane came and hit him on the head. Oh, it God. was awful. Yeah. But, um, oh, it's yeah. terrible. But well, looking, know, at that... the article, looking at yeah. the article, it says um, all of Twitter, the number one story, had to do with Ferguson, and I have to say, um, it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, in some ways, it's good because the communication um, information mm -hmm. is able to now bubble up from the bottom. Absolutely. But it's sad because there was so much misinformation, and it escalated beyond the scope of what it should have done. And I think it had national national implications that were devastating to the country and yeah. um, caused a lot of unrest. And I I don't know that necessarily it's a good thing. So. That's What's also point. interesting to see here is what you know in the infographic they, they show all what all of Twitter is talking about, and you can see like in here it says all of Twitter the most people are talking about was Ebola, Eric Gardner and Ferguson, um, Israel, um, the Ukraine, Obamacare, yeah. and it, it's good to see guns and marijuana making it in the top ten. <laughs> guns, and marijuana, guns, guns and marijuana, but but then, but then, but then you look at it, then you look at conservative activists. And you see guns, 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 Obamacare, guns, 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 Benghazi, 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 guns, Benghazi, Iraq, Iraq, you know, it's like the guns, it, it, guns, it, you guns. Know, okay, so here's, this is personally disappointing to me, though. Like, with all the stuff that happened this um, past week with um, the, the um, shootings in Paris, um, with all of the national leaders who went to um, protest against terrorism, where were we? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of depressing. And so when you see that Barack Obama is coming up all over the place, it's not necessarily positive being talked oh, absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Here's a nice, interesting fact right at the bottom. Liberal activists were more, were 3.09 times more likely to tweet about the GOP than conservatives, while conservative activists were more than 2.11 times more likely to tweet about President Obama than liberals. So in other words, if you want to complain, go to Twitter. Exactly. On a separate note, <laughs> adjust your privacy settings. There is now a Chrome extension that can turn up hidden, though not private, pictures on your Facebook. So if, you, if they're hidden, this, this Chrome extension can kind of pull it, bubble it to the surface and you can see people's pictures that they didn't necessarily want to be public. 
So just be aware of what you post on social media. You know what? On the internet we've is talked generally... about this so many times, Seth. Like, if yeah. you post something, I don't care what your privacy settings are because there have been so many situations where privacy Copy settings have, have changed yeah. and people are caught with their pants down, literally. Literally. We literally? Know. Yep, we right? know. Right? You know, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I just I tell people all the time, if you put it on the internet, assume that it's on the internet. That's yep. it. And people are going to see point, it. point, Howard. It doesn't. Yeah. It, you can use pri I look at it this way. You can use privacy settings. You can do all the different things to manage it, and that's great. And you should know how to do it, and you should absolutely be aware of it. But just assume if I'm putting putting it somewhere where one other person can see it, that then means everybody other can people see can it. see it. Yeah, that's it. So it's called, it's, it's called print screen. It doesn't even need to be print screen. It's just you know it's out there. stuff yeah. like privacy settings, changes, um, exporting data, hacks. Look, if I want to take pictures of my kids and I put them up on Instagram, they're on Instagram. If yep. I just take pictures of my kids and I put them on Facebook and I make a closed group that's just my wife and my mother and my mother-in-law just for them to see it, they, they can take those pictures, download them, show them to their friends. Now the pictures are public. They don't know how to control the privacy settings. In so this, know how to do it for yeah. yourself. But. I just know what I find I take a quick picture of my son and I want to share it on Facebook. I generally know that all right, it's a picture of my son on Facebook. Yeah, it's not as accessible per se right then and there, but will it be out there at some point? So I make sure my son's not laying there drunk at two years old. Oh my God! Don't even say well, that. I'm okay. joking. The first, the first, yeah, know, the first thing to understand happened? is the drunk son at two years old. You shouldn't be getting the son <laughs> drunk, let alone at taking the picture old. of the son drunk. Okay. So parenting tip number one: don't get no drunk. drunk son. <laughs> no drunk son. Exactly. Bad, bad, bad analogy. Someone can take that clip, right? And then they can, like, make it sound worse. So, yeah. I wouldn't uh, all right. I'll go scrub that one out. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, check out Social Times for that for that um, link over Ad Week. Oh, boy, I've dug myself a hole. And, yeah, let's thank our next sponsor on that note, Flywheel. I'm, I'm glad they're thrilled to be after that comment. <laughs> uh, Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with an easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up for the modern web designer. They back your stuff up nightly. It's blazing fast, and we use them for our tech, and it's amazing. So check them out over at getflywheel.com, and check them out and tell them we sent you. So speaking about how things bubble to the top and whatnot, how people like to complain on Facebook and complain on Twitter and whatnot, now Twitter is putting an algorithm into into their news feed. What say thee? Um, I'm going to say it's about freaking time. Why? Uh, because why that? Twi Twitter is one of those things that I was on Twitter very very early, and mm -hmm. where there wasn't thousands and thousands of tweets, there was just you know like it actually felt just for me, mm -hmm. and then it became everybody and everything from live tweets to reposting tweets to automated tweets there's so much sort of noise that goes on there that when I dip in and read different things it's sort of like I have to work really hard to find stuff for me so whether Twitter gets this right or not just attempting to try to see what's engaging and kinda of curate that a little bit I'm all for it because right now you have to use lots of different third-party to tools to try to get a better Twitter experience instead True. of having this flood so if they're gonna give it a shot I'm all for it. Let's see what they come up with. And I don't I'm think gonna, they're going to hurt anything. I'm going to take the uh, opposing stand because I don't like what Facebook did with EdgeRank, and I don't oh, like terrible. having it. I don't like like somebody making a decision for me um, as to what's important or what's not important. I like Absolutely. using yeah. the third-party tools. I like being able to um, filter the stream the way that I want to see it, and I don't want somebody determining that something is more important for me to see than something else. So I'm going to take that opposing view to you. Yeah. And, oh, and the interesting yeah, thing yeah, is, I, is like I, I have a feeling that what, what Twitter is probably going to do is they will probably um, continue with the, here is the your constant Twitter stream, and just have a highlighted one tweet at the top. So I think it'll, they'll actually find a really good balance between that. Facebook makes they're it really already, hard. But they're already doing that. Logical. They're already doing that with uh, promoted tweets. Right. I, that's why I, th I think they're going to do it as a, this is not a promoted tweet. This is a um, something that you probably would have liked. 
Like you may have missed I hope it. They don't do that. it was engaged I with. sure hope they don't do that. But here but here's the thing. Here, here's something for people like power users like me who on Twitter I call myself a power use power user. But the reason why I say that is because I don't even look at my home stream anymore. I have lists that I follow. So I have my I have my I have my list that I want to see. And I have I have like six lists that I follow. And people who I care about are on those lists. If I want to follow somebody because I feel like it's, it's I want to follow them because I feel like it's worthwhile to follow them. How many times can I say follow um, in a sentence? I will put them. I will follow them on Twitter, but I won't necessarily put them in a list right away because that means I'm committing to seeing their posts. But also, I can also then unfollow them from a list without unfollowing them from. Joe looks confused. No, yeah. I'm just saying it's like you can follow, you can unfollow. Look, here's the way I do it. If you want, if you really I use care, lists. Right? I use lists. lists and I don't lists use. Are great, I don't use I, the top. Yeah. I have lists, but I also have keywords. And I also have mm -hmm. topics, so um, I'm and I so I might follow something like if I want to, I'm curious about what somebody's saying about um, Chris Christie, right? I'm gonna follow the information that has to do with Chris Christie. I want to see mentions of my name. I have a just a, a column that's just mentions of my name, right? I have things that I'm interested in. I have groups that I'm interested in. You guys are both in my social media cool people list. You know, so people that I that I know in real life, yeah, no, right? That that you know, I want to communicate with more frequently. Then I've got media, I've got local, you know, um, uh, what you call it, emergency management. So I have, mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you what, it spreads across, so I can see a lot of different things. But it all really, tons of lists, yeah. Yeah, right. it all focuses on on interests. Well, and, and, I, and think I like being able to divide it that way. Yeah, we're all power users in this, so I don't think any of these changes are really going to affect us. We're oh, using absolutely. different tools. Yeah. We're using all kinds of things. So this, to me, is more about that, I don't want to say novice or newbie Twitter, but the more casual user who is always asking themselves the question, why is this worth it to me? And if it's anything to get them a little bit more engaged, even if it's one tweet that says this was something that, this is a person that you follow, and they had a really a really good conversation. It involved a bunch of people, so that's what we're going to put pop up to the top. That's almost the kind of thing where, yeah, I I will probably never ever see it because I never ever use the Twitter homepage. But yes. for good someone point. who has their way of getting to it, you know, I, I look at it this way: if Facebook had really good tools where I could customize it and use a third-party app, I would be there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You said they own TweetDeck. Oh yeah, I use TweetDeck and I also use um, Hootsuite. Hootsuite, I yeah. love Hootsuite. I, I I've used TweetDeck in the past, but I like Hootsuite because I can pipe in LinkedIn and I can pipe in pipe in groups from Facebook and yep. I, can, I can really go. Yeah, Google and, Plus. And the thing is, is that every ever since Hootsuite fixed their um, their word spacing and the white spacing issue on it, yes, I'm doing use my hands. Jerry's making fun of me. These are brackets. Brackets. These are parentheses. Brackets. This is a hard. These are quotes. Oh, we've jumped a shark. Anyhow, what do you guys think about the lions killing LinkedIn? The LinkedIn lions killing oh, wait, LinkedIn. Wait, wait. I have to. I have to tell you. This is a story of. This oh, boy, is going way story. back to when I first talked to Howard, and Howard explained oh. to me the reason why lions suck. Do you yep. remember uh -oh. this, Howard? Yep. Okay, the reason why most lions suck is that most lions aren't really lions. They're actually spammers. So all they're trying to do is build a great big database so that they can have your information, do email marketing. They are not actually trying to build a network. There are actually a few LinkedIn lions that are true open networkers who have thousands of connections, but they just want to connect you with people. So for example, here in Philadelphia, there's a guy named Steven Berta. He's one of the biggest LinkedIn lions. He is not a spammer. You don't get spam from him. You don't get junk from him. You don't get links from him. What you get from him is ask him if you can connect with a person, and he does it, and he makes an introduction, and he lets you – I always say it this way. If you have a couple of good open networkers, they're great to have in your network, but what you don't want to have is a whole bunch of spammers who just want to have big databases. So most LinkedIn lions aren't lions. They're not open networkers. They are spammers. <laughs> <laughs> Drops the microphone, walks off stage. Perfect. All times. <laughs> Anyhow, let's take this moment to thank our next sponsor. Sorry. I think he did great. That I was, was awesome. Great. 
I love that. That worked out well, yeah. Uh, a. Weber is a local to the Philadelphia region. They've been in business for 16 years. They are an email marketing platform that sends out emails, email blasts. Um, sorry, <laughs> I think that worked out really well. Um, they have an easy-to-use interface and strongly deliverable, relevant integrations. Best customer solution to lead, best solution for teams in, in the business sector. Um, so we, we use them for Void Tech, and they really allow us to segment our, our lists and allow us to know who's reaching it, who's opening up our list, and they have a great interface that allows us to actually develop these great email marketing campaigns. So we thank them, and let's move on to the next story. This is the 10 biggest trends in Philadelphia tech. Now, we are a Philadelphia tech-based podcast network, so it's only fitting that we talk a little bit about the best trends of 2014 in the Philadelphia area. Who wants to start? What do you think is the, big, the, the biggest trend in the Philadelphia area this year? Well, let's pull it from the articles. It's the article itself. <laughs> yes, because rather than just straight conjecture, we actually have this article here with a great link. Um, so number 10 is high school hackers are taking over. Um, I, this is actually something that warms my heart um, because the word hacking was always sort of, it wasn't a security thing. It was more of, I'm going to make something. I'm going to take some piece of code. I'm going to do something with it. And the more that I think... I'll say young people, whether it's my kids, whether it's high school students, college students, the more that they take stuff and mess with it and make new stuff out of it, I'm all in favor of it. I think uh, technology is a wide open platform, so the more people that you know make new stuff out of existing technology and create new technologies, I think it's fabulous. And it's great to see that really starting in Philadelphia. Um, and it's not just limited to Silicon Valley and uh, San Francisco and California and Southern California. Amen. And things like Amen. that. Amen. All I gotta say to that is this. Uh oh, he's got the sound effects app up. Here we go. Oh dear God. Okay. Anyhow, um, anyhow, remember when GSI was bought by eBay? Well, apparently Chris Sardakis, that one, one of the higher ups there, got prison time for insider trading. He tipped off his family members that this was going down. I remember when this happened, and it was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like you, you like. I'm Why sorry, I don't think that's that? a trend. Yeah. It's number nine on the list. I understand that, but <laughs> it's really a trend. Like, uh, here's a trend. students hacking, that could be a, a trend, you know, that, that we're getting... How about co-working, Charlie? How about co-working? Co-working no. is a trend. Co-working could be a trend, yes. It is a trend. But and, Chris Sarodak is, is not a trend. Fine, fair enough. Well, let, let's say number nine is wrong, and I agree with you, Jody, that this is something where that's a that's just a news story that got some press, and um, look, it, the reason they call it insider trading and put you in prison for it is because um, it's not fair, but in other countries, it's normal, so, you know, we're just a little uptight here, but that's... No, that's I don't our... think it's a matter of being uptight. I think he, he had inside information, yeah. but it's not a trend. I mean, there's... It's, it's not a trend. I, I yeah. granted. Let's move on. So okay. anyhow, anyhow, so a lot. Of, there's been a lot. Of, a big boom. If you watch the interview show on the network, I've I've done a lot of interviews with um, co-working space founders and and people who use co-working spaces. We have Indie Hall. We have Venture Forth. We have Seed Philly. But we that, have, that's not a Philly only trend. That's like a no. It is. It's, it's a big trend, and it's you're seeing it in Philadelphia. As and then remember, this is an article. It's based. From technically Philly, and it's saying you know this is a, you know what? emerging. And, and here's another thing: the code for Philly catches fire. Is that not kind of like comparable to hacking? Yeah, right? it is. All right. So, all right. So, but, but here's another thing: Monetate, which is a big, you know, e-marketing startup, really went through a major shakeup, which I think was as a big story. I don't How think it's a trend. Story. I don't think it's a trend. All right, fair enough. It's not a trend. I'm still waiting right, for the. So, okay. Big raises, is that a trend? I didn't see a big raise. Did you get a big raise? I wish I did. I can personally say I did not get a big raise. All right, that's so I don't think true. that's a good trend either. So I think this story should be big stories of the year. Okay, so, yeah, well, I mean, that I would agree with. But, you know, if somebody's giving out big raises, we're all available. 
One thing, one thing is that I do think that one of the biggest trends, number one, is that the original pride is starting to shine. I mean, I've started to really tech up to really show that, you know, look, Philadelphia is a powerhouse. It's an emerging powerhouse of technology. Um, technically, Philly has been in, in, in building up and doing a lot more events. I feel like that is a trend. The people are taking, starting to take Philadelphia and their surrounding suburbs seriously. There's still a big gap in, there's a big gap in the Philly-centric voices and the suburbs' voices. The people don't really, in Philadelphia, a lot of people in Philadelphia don't really view the suburbs as a place to have a startup. And I've been combating that by saying, look, I'm in Doylestown. I'm doing a startup. I know there's Brick Simple, which is they, they're developing the pick of the week that I'm doing this week. I mean, there's a lot of startups in Bucks County alone. There's a lot of startups out in Voorhees, out in Mount Maple Shade. And where are you, Howard? I'm in Mount Laurel. but Mount Laurel. I was thinking I, yeah, I was, I was one that, of these mounts. And this is something, um, when I was in California, the, uh, the culture of startup was so pervasive. And I'm starting to, I can tell you, in the Philadelphia area, I'm starting to see that kind of conversation. Um, the conversation about uh, getting funding, the conversation about getting, uh, you know, the co-working spaces where you're seeing smaller startups benefit from working together. It's really nice. I like the fact that Philadelphia is becoming a good uh, center for that. So Exactly. So we're, we're between New York and D.C. And obviously, if you know your geography, we're between New York and D.C. But um, D.C. is an up-and-coming tech sector as well. And New York is a big powerhouse in the region. It's the big one. That's, it's other. It's you know. It's one of the bookends, in my opinion. The Silicon Valley in the in the west, and this New York City in the east. But I feel like Philadelphia has always been in the, always been in the, um, in the sh in the shades of New York, and I think it's now it's breaking free and saying, hey, we are a force to be reckoned with. Well, I think about it this way. Philly was never considered a Los Angeles, a New York City, a D.C., uh, San Francisco. It was always sort of like in that it's in the top ten, but it's not in the top five. And yes. I think what we're starting to see is that, uh, and Chicago's starting to see it with technology too, where you have other than New York and Los Angeles and San Francisco as tech centers. Um, yes. Which exactly. I think is great. It's uh, it's good for the area, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's good for all of us as well. All right, now that we completely ripped apart the, um, <laughs> the article, <laughs> and but, article. I mean, but we have found some good things. So let's not bash them because we're trying to team up with them on some stuff as well. Um, so thank you, Jody. They, they, they can use us to uh, bounce ideas off of, and we also would be happy to help them come up with better titles because it's not a bad article. It's just mistitled. Yes, okay, so we need to... Hey, anyway, let's take our next sponsor. <laughs> oh, this show, this show, oh my God, it's going to get me in trouble. Look, we here. tell it the way it is. It is. Amen, it sister, is. amen. Our last sponsor of the day is Zoho Mail. They are a professional email for your business. They are like Google Apps, only they're more affordable, and they are business-centric, meaning that you... It's built and designed for businesses. They are low-cost professional email with business class features and security. So yes, you can go Google Apps. I have Google Apps for a lot of my, uh, lot of my email. I use Google Apps. But you're paying for a lot of other features that you might not necessarily need or that you don't want to pay the big price tag for. Zoho Mail is another option to be looking out for. So go to Zoho, Z-O-H-O, dot com slash mail. Check it out today. Try it. You'll like it. You like it. We use it here for <laughs> tech. So anyhow, I'm gonna let Jody go first today for the picks of the week. You're gonna let me go first. Yeah, be, be, oh, now you just deleted be, my pick. <laughs> I'm, moving, I'm, moving, I'm moving it up in the show notes. But that's Sorry. okay because I know what I was going to talk about. So, um, you know, I do a lot of um, search. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I have a. What? He's just what? having way too much fun with the with the Why? sound effects. Why? 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 Because I, I screwed up. Yeah, but you did it during my part. <laughs> all right, anyhow, really? all right. Yeah, sorry, all right. Continue, Jody. Oh, my God. Okay, well, the, the whole concept of finding your way when you're lost in the woods is now made a lot easier because um, there is a, an app that you can download to your Google Android or you can download to your iPad or your iPhone or iOS device. Um, and it's called Pocket Ranger. There's various editions of it, uh, depending upon where you think you might get lost. Uh, the reason I find <laughs> it to be helpful 
is because when I play in the woods with my dogs and we're doing search and rescue, it's kind of neat to see where the different parks are. And um, the one I have is a, a New Jersey um, version, and it's the state parks and forests, and it's an outdoors guide. So if you like going camping, if you like going you know, hiking or boating, or you like uh, just exploring new places, it's, um, it's free, and it's cool, and it's worthy of checking out. Awesome. So my, my pick of the week is CONTAP, C-O-N-T-A-P. It's still not out yet, but what, what, the reason I want to promote it is that it's actually being built out by, its CTO is the one, the only, Det Anson of Brook Simple, which is based in Doylestown. Um, he's one of the original startups. He's been in doing this. Almost, he's almost not a startup anymore. I'd say he's been doing this since the early 2000s. He builds app, apps in the Doylestown area, and but this is this is going to get this is going to be another app to get rid of the business cards. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to take a picture of the person and say, "I met this person at this event," and then you can share links between. And now they're in jail. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not an app. I think, I think it's in the app. I think it's worth downloading when it comes out. Anyhow, Howard, what's your pick? All right. So my pick, I like things. And um, I he likes things. To, I should be worried. Well, things being not yeah. just digital stuff, but things like to make other things. So, so um, I, I'm a little worried. I'm still worried, Howard. Uh, don't worry about it. So I'm worried, about too. About a year ago, a little <laughs> over a year ago, there was a great Kickstarter project called Foldio. And that's what I have here. Now that this is not my pick. What is Foldio? Foldio wait, wait, is like wait, a little light like picks in one. That's not well, fair. this was this was the original Foldio. And the thing about the original Foldio is it's a little bit small. And the thing that's great is the Foldio version 2. Wait, wait, wait. Is the, wait, wait. Is what does pick. it do? Here's what Foldio is. A light does. Box. Foldio is a light box. Oh, and this I light see. box, you can put all kinds of things. It's got these little LED strips in there. I um, see. Okay. And here's what's really cool about Foldio. I can take the little batteries off the sides. I can take the background out. And I can unfold it. And this thing then folds flat. It's still lit, but it then folds flat for easy storage. And I can put it away, put it on my shelf. Very, very easy to work. from the inside? Um, it's got these two little LED strips. Let me pop the batteries out here. da 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 Oh, I so see. Okay, wait, wait. So it's got so these two little LED on. strips on the top. Okay. Gotcha. And then you plug the batteries in, and you just liter literally you just put it together really fast with these tabs. So you get that box. Cool. And what's so great about it is it, like it comes that. with multiple backgrounds, so you can do shots on black. You can do shots on green. You How can often do, do you use it? Gray on white. Um, and the original one was like maybe forty-five bucks or something like that. The new one is bigger. It's actually uh, twice the volume, so instead of it being 10 inches wide, it's 15 inches wide. That's great. That gives you a lot better abilities. Um, they, they are definitely funded. There's about uh, three, four days left in their Kickstarter project. Um, they've already crossed $440,000 in funding. Um, I can tell you I've backed a lot of Kickstarters, uh, some that were great, some that were average, some that were, eh, eventually I got the thing. Well, this was a really good one. They had good communication. Um, what they delivered was exactly what we wanted. Um, they did a really nice job all the way through. And so their second project, there's actually going to be a dimmer switch. Um, there's going to be diffusers on the LEDs. And there's going to be even more LEDs. So you're going to get more light, more area for that light. Uh, same backgrounds. Uh, same. They'll probably use that same. Uh, they did a little cheapy carrying case. This was nothing. But you could put everything in this little bag. Um, but Foldio, it's nice whenever you need to do little product shots like of a stapler or of a phone or of a, a trinket. If you're selling things on eBay or Etsy, this is a great yeah, little thing to have around. Lost. So um, I can tell you, my daughter does little crafts. It's wonderful for that. So Very cool. Foldio. Awesome, guys. Well, this has been the Social Media Addicts Podcast, episode 15. Um, we are back and going strong, though slightly nutty. Um <laughs> It was just like with coffee in Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, slightly nutty. Oh God, there you go. Anyhow, that's been a, it's been a great show, guys. Thank you, and well, welcome Howard, our new co-host. I'm not sure what he got himself into, but um, <laughs> you know, I mean, they said three of us on board now. So exactly. All right, guys. Catch you guys next week. Thank okay. you all.